So you're considering making a move to Dunedin, Florida, and you're wondering if it's the best place for you. Great news. In today's video, we're going to break down all the best that Dunedin, Florida has to offer. And if you stick around till the end, I'm even going to share my personal favorite restaurant. And trust me, you definitely don't want to miss this. All right. So what's the scoop with Dunedin, Florida? Well, I'm going to share my personal story with you guys because Dunedin actually is a place where my wife and I, when we first came to the Tampa Bay area, we tried to move here. And, um, you know, we came down, we, we actually flew down in September of 2018. We met a real estate professional here. Um, I wasn't selling real estate here at that time. So I met a real estate professional here. Um, we found some houses in Dunedin and we went to the local area to check it out and we fell in love, y'all. And I'm going to break down the details of why in a minute, but we had such a hard time getting a property under contract. And, you know, we wrote an offer, the seller didn't accept. We wrote another offer, the seller didn't accept. And what we didn't know, because we weren't from here, was that Dunedin was growing. People really wanted to be in that area. You know, there's great schools. You know, we're going to talk about the food, the dining, you know, the outdoors, uh, that downtown area, which is just awesome. Um, but the town was growing and um, it's not crazy big. Big, but people want to be here. And once you hit the ground in Dunedin, you will know why immediately. It is one of the absolute best areas, in my personal opinion, in, in all of the Tampa Bay area, especially on the Gulf Coast. It is one of those spots and locations that has a small town feel with all the amenities you could ever ask for, the outdoors, the parks. It's just absolutely beautiful, y'all. And trust me, we tried so hard and, and we flew back to, to Detroit with our tail between our legs after not getting two offers accepted. We took 10 days and then I flew back down and we tried again and we did not end up getting a house in Dunedin. And um, while I love where I live now, it is not Dunedin and we really wanted to be there. So, you know, trust me, it's still on our radar and we're planning on making that move too. But I thought I would share it with you because I love Dunedin and um, I want to share my personal perspective, my professional perspective on the real estate side, but I really want to get into some of that nitty gritty today. <music> Hey everyone, Juan Akala here in Tampa, Florida. And if you're new to the channel, we talk all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches and the sunshine. And if this is your first time to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that little bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video because we are talking all things Tampa. Honestly, we're getting so many calls around the country looking to move or relocate to the Tampa Bay area. So if you're considering relocating, moving, investing, or snowboarding in the Tampa area, please feel free to reach out. You can call, text, message, email. Heck, like I said, you can even DM me on Instagram. When it comes to moving to Tampa Bay, we've got your back. All right, so now we're going to dig into all things Dunedin. And the first thing I want to address is the fact that when you look at the way that Dunedin is spelled, it looks like Dunedin. And I really struggled when I first came. I'm like, Dunedin, what is Dunedin? Well, it turns out it's Dunedin and it's from Scottish descent. So when you look at it on paper, you're like, oh, that totally makes sense. But if you don't know, you don't know. And I had no clue. So it really kind of threw me off. I didn't know until we got downtown and one of the locals corrected me when we first you know, had our first visit to the area. Dunedin, Florida is one of the oldest towns in the Gulf Coast of Florida. It's known for its outdoor living, um, its beautiful parks, its scenic, wonderful downtown, and the Caladesi State Island Park, which used to be one island, but after a hurricane was turned into two. Crazy, man. It's known for its outdoor activities and art shows, the Highland Games, Mardi Gras, Dia de los Muertos, and the Celtic Music Festival, which is just outstanding. Dunedin really has one of those laid back lifestyles. It just makes it an outstanding place to live, work and play. It's just awesome, guys. So now I'm going to jump into some of those amenities that, you know, make this a very attractive place to live, um, to come hang out, to come spend an evening, because there's just so much to do here in Dunedin. You've got the Dunedin Marina, which is just outstanding. You know, you can pull up there and as long as there's an open dock available, you can rent 
it by the hour per foot for your boat, which is really cool. And this is a boater's paradise, y'all. This, you know, the, the marina here is just beautiful. There's almost four miles of coastline here in Dunedin, Florida, which is incredible. Um, it's just an absolute beautiful place to come visit. And if you're a boater, you got to come check this place out. And right at the end of the marina, you've got Dunedin Fish Market. So you can pull the boat up, you can jump out, have a great fish sandwich, jump back on the boat and head back out into the Gulf. It's just an incredible spot to start your journey when you're coming into Dunedin, Florida. And right there next to the marina, you've got Edgewater Park, which is a beautiful um, municipal park there. It's got a kid's playground that is to die for, man. And, you know, we've got three young kids and it's just beautiful. They've got all the stuff for them to climb on. They keep it super clean. And um, that's one thing I do want to make note of. I think the town overall as a whole is just, it's immaculate. It just gives you that sense of like calm, peaceful influence. You know, you've got the coast, you've got the old growth wooded oak trees that are in every park. There's peacocks running around. I mean, it's, it's a very cool spot to come visit. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Caladesi Island, you know, which is on the northern end of Dunedin. Uh, as you take the Dunedin Causeway across, there's all kinds of fishing um, on both sides of the causeway there. There's actually a place where you can rent paddle boards and small sailing boats and take them out into the Gulf. You've got sand keys down in that area. It's just beautiful, y'all. It is a great place to visit. If you come into Dunedin, please make a trip um, to Caladesi Island and Honeymoon Island. You will not regret it in the least. And as we head further south, we're now going to start to get into downtown Dunedin, which I just have to tell you is one of the most absolute beautiful places in all of the Tampa Bay area to visit. You can park for free. If you jumped out of your car and wanted to walk the town, you could totally spend four or five hours doing that, visiting all of the local shops. You've got boutique uh, shops. You've got beautiful dining all kinds of cafes. There's breweries, a, a brief walk to the marina where you can go hang out on the dock. And I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. And we're going to get into a bunch of those right now. And one of the coolest spots I think you'll find in all of downtown is right on Main Street where the Pinellas Trail crosses over Main Street. You've got the historic Orange Belt Railroad Depot, which they have turned into an ice cream shop. And this place is so cool, y'all. It just gives you that vibe of small town and old world, but it is just absolutely, it, it gives you those feelings, you know, growing up as a kid, going to the ice cream stand and then walking around town. And if, if you guys can relate to that in any way, then you probably know those feelings that I'm talking about, because it just gives that vibe, you know, on that corner there, people are moving back and forth because the Pinellas trails there. And I know we've talked about this before, but that's a 47 mile trail that goes all the way from the top part of Pinellas County, all the way to downtown St. Petersburg. Um, and it's a great place. You can run, you can walk, you can bike through there. You can even have have your dogs there, but it runs right through uh, downtown Dunedin, which makes it a really cool spot. And like I told you before, you've got this four mile coastline in Dunedin there. Well, the Pinellas Trail runs all the way up through it. So you can go from, you know, Caladesi Island, take the Pinellas Trail all the way back downtown. Um, it's a, you know, nice bike ride. What a great way to spend the afternoon. And as we talk more about downtown, I really want to start diving into the dining because I'm telling you guys, make sure that you come hungry because you can spend the entire day in Dunedin eating your way from one side of the town all the way to the other. They make it way too convenient to pull your wallet out and fill your belly. I am not going to lie. You know, they've got just absolutely stunning restaurants. And I want to share a few of those dining spots with you right now, um, because next time you come to town, I assure you don't want to miss out. And I hope you're here for more than just one day. That way you can take advantage of more than just one of these delicious restaurants. You've got Cafe Al Fresco, the Lucky Lobster, Flanagan's Irish Pub, the Living Room, which has this really cool outdoor dining space, the Black Pearl, and Hog Island Fish Camp, just to name a few. Got a couple great seafood markets. I mean, being on the Gulf Coast, we wouldn't expect anything less. We've got the Dunedin Fish Market and Jensen Brothers Seafood, which is just absolutely incredible, guys. 
And for all my fellow beer drinkers out there, there's something else I want to share with you too. Dunedin's got four really cool breweries. They're actually great breweries. You've got Dunedin Brewery. You've got Seventh Sun Brewery, which is my personal favorite when it comes to downtown Dunedin. You've got Hob Brewing, and you've also got uh, Woodwright Brewing, which these are all walkable from the downtown area. Seventh Sun and, and uh, Woodwright are a little bit further north, but you could still make it there. <laughs> you know, you could go have a couple adult beverages and then walk back downtown and probably be good for us anyways. But man, these are just great local breweries. This town is just so much fun to hang out in. You know, you can make your way around by drinking wine. You can make your way around by drinking coffee, which we're going to get into right now. Um, there's some great coffee shops down there. You've, you've got Dunedin Coffee and Bakery, which is one of our personal spots to go get coffee. You've got Sandpiper Coffee. A unique one is uh, uh, two crow coffee. I have a hard time pronouncing that even. You've got Ninth Bar and then the Scone Age, which is a really cool name. You got to give them props anyways. And obviously they're known for some pastries and coffee as well, but that's just such a cool name. Now I want to get into some of the parks because this is one of the first things that my wife and I found when we came to the area. And it's what really made us decide to try to purchase a home there. You know, we ended up in Weaver Park the very first day we were down there by accident. And, you know, when we pulled up into Weaver Park, it's this beautiful park that's that's covered in these old growth oak trees, you know, with the Spanish moss hanging. So, you know, it was September and it, it was hot during that time period, but this gives a lot of relief. And there was just all these families running around and people walking around the park. And there was this one area where they had those like these exercise, uh, and I won't call them machines, but there, there actually was some machines there too. And they're covered from the sun as well. And we, we pulled up and we had our 10 month old with us at that point. Um, and, you know, we, we just want to spend some time at a park. And what's, what's really fascinating about this park is in the parking lot, when you pull up, right behind you is the Gulf of Mexico and the parks in front of you. Again, it's all shaded. And it's just beautiful. And we were there about 10 minutes and um, we're sitting you know, on a bench and just enjoying our time there. And sure enough, here comes this peacock strutting right through the middle of the park. Now, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, y'all. We do not have peacocks strutting through any parks except for the zoos. <laughs> so it shocked me because these things are tall. I mean, it was gorgeous. It was fascinating, but I was not prepared for that. And all the local kids were running around like it's nothing, you know, and I'm so used to only seeing a bird like that either on television or the few times I'd seen one at a zoo. So to me, it was just like one of those shocking moments. But if you live in Dunedin, you know, there is peacocks all over the place. It's they are one of the local birds. And it's so cool to see, um, especially if you're not from here, just to get a glimpse of that, because it just adds to the beauty and the feeling of the town overall. It just made us really kind of want another one of those things that made us fall in love with the area. You've got Hammock Park, you've got Edgewater Park, which we talked about earlier, which is right there at the marina, right at the end of downtown. There's about 20 parks overall. And it's just, again, the outdoor living in Pinellas County is wonderful. But the outdoor living in Dunedin specifically is amazing. Again, you've got the Pinellas Trail that runs right through the middle. You've got a state park there. You've got, you know, four miles of beaches. It You cannot go wrong when it comes to moving to Dunedin, Florida. Another one of the really cool things here is the Toronto Blue Jays actually have their spring training here in Dunedin, Florida, which is just a beautiful stadium here. I think it's called TD Ballpark, uh, but it's clean. It's just a great place to come catch a ball game during the spring. You know, they'll be playing the Phillies or they'll play the Yankees who are all local as well. It's just a really cool place to come see a game. Um, I don't think you can go wrong. And all the neighborhoods attached directly to it. I mean, the the homes here in Dunedin, Florida are just beautiful. It's again, it's got this really laid back coastal vibe. You know, a lot of the houses were built, you know, in the early 1900s, you know, all the way up to the 1980s. They're starting to do some newer construction now, but they're just quaint. They got that old craftsman style. Um, they're just a really, really cool vibe. And they add to the ambiance of the area as well. And speaking of homes, I want to talk about the current home values. You know, as of right now, you know, we're recording this video in the summer of 2021, and the average list price as of today is right around 378000 So if you're thinking about making that move to Dunedin, that's kind of what you can wrap your mind around. Uh, 
And we've had tremendous growth here in the area year over year. In just one year's growth, Dunedin is up 29% in real estate, which is astounding, y'all. So um, if you are coming, know that you know people are obviously long on Dunedin. It's a great coastal town. And like I said, once you arrive, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It makes sense. If this is the vibe, if this is what you're trying to accomplish, if you're looking for a coastal lifestyle that offers outdoor living in a boater's paradise, you can't go wrong here. So I wanted to give you guys some of those details. And also, you know, we talk about, um, you know, amenities. Well, how far is it from the airport? You know, Tampa Airport TPA is roughly 35 minutes from downtown Dunedin. Um, if you want to go to downtown Tampa, it's right around 40 minutes. And if you want to go to downtown St. Petersburg, it's right about 35 minutes also. So, you know, you're within striking distance a little bit longer, depending on traffic or a little bit shorter, depending on traffic. But those are basically the timelines you can expect if you're going to travel to the airport, downtown Tampa or downtown St. Petersburg population is roughly about 36,000 people. So, you know, for a quaint downtown, there's, you know, it's a, it's a good sized community, but it doesn't feel like that. It can get busy during spring break. I mean, it's a coastal community. If you're near the water and you're in Florida and you're anywhere near Clearwater, which Dunedin is the next city north of, of Clearwater, it's going to get busy. So it can get a little bit chaotic between that and the Blue Jays when they come for spring training as well. We do get an influx of people coming in. I mean, Obviously, you know, with the Toronto Blue Jays being here, we have our friends to the north um, who will come down. We do have snowbirds here. That's what everybody calls people that, you know, come from the north and spend the winters. You know, so that's spring break time. You can definitely expect to have some heavier traffic. But once that subsides, you know, the town goes back to having that just real world coastal vibe laid back that it's known for and that most people just absolutely love. I also want to cover property taxes with you. So if you're considering purchasing here in Dunedin, you know, what can you expect? And, you know, the property taxes in Dunedin are just below 1%. So if you have a home that is valued roughly at $400,000, you can expect to, you know, to be paying $4,000 annually if that home is your primary residence. All right. So last and not least, I told you if you stuck around to the end, I would share with you my personal favorite restaurant. And I can't wait to do that with you guys. It is Casa Tina, which is an authentic, healthy Mexican restaurant that is family ran, um, family owned in downtown Dunedin. And it is absolutely incredible. The first time we came to Dunedin, we experienced this restaurant. And let me just tell y'all, if you guys come and it's a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, you better make reservations or you're not getting in without waiting a, a couple of hours to do that. The food here is ridiculously fresh and it is so bright and vibrant. It just pops off your tongue. I cannot say enough of this. The first time we came, we had uh, ceviche verde, uh, which is just absolutely mind-blowing. We had a Paloma, which, you know, I've had some Palomas before, but this thing was just lights out. So I m much credit. And um, my favorite dish and, 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 and my absolute favorite dish that I have to share with you guys, and I would strongly encourage you to at least sample this when you come. My wife and I were just blown away at how vibrant and refreshing and just absolutely just savory this dish was. All of those things at one time, it was just incredible. And it's called Pisado a la Veracruzana. And it is just unbelievable. And this restaurant, y'all, I'm going to put the link below. I strongly encourage you to go visit it if you're going to come to Dunedin, Florida. You know, when we walked into that restaurant the first time, they had all this beautiful, you know, Mexican art in there. That was one thing. But they had these, these dancers who were uh, using uh, like silk robes. And I can't remember what it's called, uh, but they were hanging from the ceiling and like just adding to the ambiance. It was absolutely incredible. Um, I can't say enough for the experience I've had there. Anyone who comes through Dunedin, I, that's the first place I tell them you have to go to Casa Tina. It is just incredible. The way that they make you feel, the hospitality um, to how all the food is plated. I mean, just visit the website. You will be blown away at the presentation. Um, and more importantly, the quality of your experience. The food's outstanding. The hospitality is outstanding. And I just cannot say enough. Please visit Casa Tina when you come to Dunedin, Florida. 
All right, y'all. I hope that was helpful in some way. You know, whether you're thinking about moving, relocating, you know, snowbirding, investing in Dunedin, Florida, or anywhere in the Tampa Bay area, I'd be more than happy to help you make that move. If you've got any questions, please feel free to link those below as well. I'd be more than happy to answer them. You can call, text message, email. Heck, you can even DM us. However, you got to get hold of us when it comes to relocating or moving to the Tampa Bay area. My team at the True Living Group has got your back. And as always, go out and live that Tampa life and we'll see you in the next one.